Number four in our pick six, uh, which comes from Joe Witt Jr., uh, is about the cornerback position. Uh, that is one that has been a cause of much talk this season. It is one that, you know, everyone's like, oh, my God, what are they going to do? Uh, you know, at, at corner, is, is Emmanuel Forbes going to come back and play? Is it this? Is that? Then all of a sudden last week, there was no rotation. There was no, like, working guys back. It was Mike Sanders still on the outside. Noeg Benagane on the inside. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice on the other. So what have they seen from Mike Sainer still uh, to say, like, hey, you've grown enough to be a number, I guess not number one, number two outside corner? Uh, Mikey, you know, we've we've moved him inside and out. Last two games he's, he's played outside and um, – and he's and we're putting him to we put him to the field the last two games, and he's he's, he's getting more comfortable there. Um, he can play with vision. He played a lot more physical. Um, he's covering well. So right now that's where we need him to be. And so he's going to find a home back inside at some point. But uh, from where the defense is right now, uh, we need him to the field. So there you go. It's it's you know switching sides depending on which side. There's more space to cover. Um, that means he often has help on the inside, like with the nickel player. Um, depending on the formation, obviously. But there, there's always going to be certain support to the field uh, that, that they rely upon. Um, big picture, he did hint that, hey, we want to eventually get him back inside. But why outside? And, and did you think that this was a possibility back in training camp? Oh, uh, yeah, we knew he can play both inside and outside. Um, you know, ideally, uh, you, you know, we started him playing at the star position. But, uh, you know, we play guys, like I told you, each week we change up for what we need to do to win that particular game. And so that's that's what we've been doing. And I do think that that's an important point, right? Like there is a chance that we see Emmanuel Forbes, for instance, again, in a different matchup later on this season. Well, also like things happen, uh, but on Forbes, like why was there no rotation last week? This was a guy that was the starter, got injured. What What's going on here? Well, that's same as the Mikey question playing to the field. We're, we're, each week we're going to play the guys in position that, that we feel best that gives us a chance to win that particular game. And so, um, you know, that's how I can answer all those questions of the, the, the number of reps that anybody's playing um, at any position. Uh, that's what we felt that was best for that week. And they go in with the plan, and that plan doesn't work. I think they, they move things around. Be, and I say that uh, because Dan Quinn, when I asked him post game about the corner rotation, Last week uh, at at Northwest Stadium, almost said almost said the old name, uh, but it, that that's not who pays for it anymore. At Northwest Stadium, um, DQ said no, it was, it was working. So like, why would we change it? So I, I think that they probably divide up the reps on some level with anticipation, but also depending on what they think based off the matchup. Now playing Mikey outside has also opened up the spot inside for Noah Igbenogene, who has played very very well and was with Dan Quinn and Joe Witt in Dallas last season uh what has been the growth for Noah that has made him one of the best options that they've got you know we got him late last year when we were in in, in Dallas and um you know with the trade when we traded uh fat for him uh and we had you know a number of guys uh that were just ahead of him and and with him coming in there late he came in here at the same time with everybody else and he was able to put his uh, performance out there and he's earned the right to go out there and, 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 and get the reps in the starting position that he that he's getting. So he just went in Dallas. He came late, and he was behind the eight ball a little bit. I mean, he was really, really good in training camp. Um, not, like, amazing, not, hey, he has to play, but he definitely showed an ability in training camp. You're like, I think they could probably rely on that guy. And outside, and you know, when he was called upon early, not as much. But all of a sudden, you put him inside, and he shows a, a physicality and a competitiveness that really is beneficial. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, what he can do for the rest of the season if they need him, or you know maybe Emmanuel Forbes reemerges outside and you get the uh, you know Mikey back inside, and and that can be the uh, the group that you rock with. But they're definitely going to be open minded about it, and so uh, it's going to be something that we continue to track. Number five this weekend, of course, Joe's unit they got to track uh, Derrick Henry, and uh, that. That is particularly tough, uh, and it's especially hard when you are worried about Derrick Henry to one side of the run, and like, what happens if they fake it to him and Lamar Jackson starts running the other way? Very, very difficult run game to defend. Joe Witt Jr. on doing that very difficult task. Well, it starts with you know Todd Monk, and I was with him in, in Cleveland 
um, in 2019. Extremely smart guy. Um, they have a mobile quarterback that can beat you with his arm and his legs. They have a, a big running back downhill that's faster than you think and then they have a, a smaller running back that runs with more power than you think so they you know 43 and 22 both of them are, are really good players the offensive line's big but they can get on people and so they're just they're they're good and, and they know what they're doing they know how to scheme it up um, they do a nice job they they certainly do they have every run in the book in um they can run power they can run inside zone they can run outside zone they can run gap scheme they can run pin pull they can run zone read um they'll run reverses and and end arounds and all that kind of stuff with their receivers like zay flowers they'll do it with justice hill uh coming around on, on a jet sweep like there is a lot of different stuff that they do in their running game and so it's gonna be very interesting to see how joe witt jr dedicates his resources and I, i'm also curious because you know joe mentioned uh the uniqueness of derrick henry there um and logan said something this morning that i thought was interesting is that like despite his size he plays like a speed back like he's big enough that he will stiff arm you through the earth earth he is hard to tackle because he is just so large but he's not like a marshawn lynch power style runner he runs like a fast guy and he is a fast guy which makes stopping him very very difficult you're, you're not necessarily approaching him when you're approaching the offense okay you got to be in your gap you got you have to be able to defeat blocks um send them where you want them to send them and in and, and that standpoint from a tackling standpoint you know you, you talk about and this every week it's not just with with Derek you have a tackling plan for every back that you have and you try to stick to the plan and so uh, we have our tackling plan for him just like we had had it last week and um that doesn't change it's what that tackling plan is and executing that it becomes a lot harder against a back like Derrick Henry. You know, corralling him is hard because he's fast, uh, like legitimately fast. One of the fastest ball carriers in the NFL every single year. You know, when the list comes out, uh, he'll he breaks you know an 80 yard run seemingly every single year. He's already gotten a couple that are nearly that long this year or longer. Um, he's he's a unique guy. Uh, and you talk about corralling and getting to the football. Like trying to tackle him with one is a nightmare. You got to send him where you want to send him. Uh, that way you got multiple bodies there waiting on him because that is about the only way to bring that dude down. Number six. Now, of course, the commanders are in the spotlight, and a lot of that is about Jaden and the offense. So is that something that Joe Witt Jr. enjoys? Like, hey, we're just going to chill here in the background and work on our craft? Or uh, does he feel like his unit perhaps needs a little bit more attention, deserves a little bit more attention? Oh, well, I'm not necessarily looking for any type of attention. I'm looking for better play, you know. Uh, Jaden, he's getting all the attention that he's getting because he's played outstanding, and, and that's what comes with it. And so um, the only thing I care about is winning football games, and uh, and I'm glad he's our quarterback. And so uh, we're trending the right way um, the last the last couple of weeks, and and it's gonna it's gonna keep going that way for the for the defense. We're gonna we're gonna start making a little bit more splash, getting this ball. Um, the physicality is definitely there. But um, I'm, I don't care about being in darkness or light. I just care about winning. That's the only thing I really care about. Was there any doubt that that's what Joe Hitt was going to say? Like, Anthony, if I had told you, hey, we're going to play this. Uh, here's the title of the, the – or here's the question. What's Joe Hitt's answer? Was there any fiber of your being that thought it would be anything other than, nah, we're good. Just keep winning. No. Here's the difference, though. Do you believe it? Do you actually believe him? I think as a competitor, deep down, he does want the team or the defense, I guess, because they still haven't had an interception through five games. Right. No, there's things that he wants, yeah. but I I think he wants the play. Like, I think what he said is true. I don't always think that coaches are like that. Like, this is what makes the staff special and, like, Dan special and Cliff special and Joe and, like, Anthony Lynn is just floating in the background. Guy's a former NFL head coach, and he's not getting nearly the credit that, like, Cliff is because Cliff's the OC. Like, that's how it works. If if Lynn gets elevated to the OC and they do the same stuff next year, like, it'll be the same deal. Um, I would guess, by the way, to Vita Pritchard, if they, they went internally, would get it. Um, but that's a different story. Um, the point is, like, there's so many guys that contribute. There's quality control coaches whose names people have never heard of that are doing mm -hmm. really important stuff. As long as you win, it don't matter. And as long as your unit's playing well, like that's the thing for a coordinator. Like if they're winning in spite of Joe Witt's defense, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm happy we're winning, but like this sucks. I got to I gotta get better. And that's where he was the first couple of weeks of this winning streak. So I actually believe it with him that he is just about playing better ball and, yeah. and winning as opposed to some people that are like, I want they want to do that for the attention, not for the winning. Mm-hmm.
So salute to you, Joe Witt Jr. You tell no lies. At least ones that we've been able to parse out yet. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.